Hey viewers, and welcome to another Sunday here on Pagan Perspective. This week, we're discussing the moon. So, I'm really excited about this. I actually have the opportunity to talk about the moon on the eve of the full moon. Um, for those of you who don't know, tonight is the full moon. And in my practice, the moon does hold a certain amount of significance. Um, not only is it a representation of the goddess um, or feminine energy, um, it, it is also um, an influential factor on the way I either cast um, spells or when I do spells or the timing of spells. Um, the moon cycles affect um, emotional cycles and physical cycles and things like this. Um, to me this just makes sense because the moon um, is a, a major factor in the flow of the tides and the oceans, um, weathered patterns, um, you know, all of this. So it stands to reason that our body being 70% water would naturally be affected by the cycles of the moon. And if we take a look back into history and we look at, you know, pre-Christianity cultures and, and pre-Christian ideas and pre-literature cultures, um, we see a lot of use of the moon in timekeeping as well as, um, you know, spiritual significance and things like that. Um, I think this is, has a lot to do with the fact that the cycles of the moon are much more easily recognizable than the cycles of the sun. Um, the sun does have cycles, the sun moves in the sky, but the moon cycles are visibly different almost every night of the year. So we can track that a lot easier. Um, it's a lot easier to keep track of the the days between full moons or the days between new moons than it is to keep track of, you know, say a, a five degree change in the path of the sun. Um, so for me, that's where I think this comes from, is it started as a way to more easily track the heavens. So for me, I think it's very interesting to look at the historical significance of the moon in pre-literate cultures, uh, pre-Christian cultures, things like this, um, that use it as not only a, as a way of keeping track of time, but also um, sort of a spiritual counter. And this idea of keeping track of time, counting days, using the moon as a way to keep track of time would have been... Uh, very, very significant in the lives of early culture. So it's, it's natural that a spiritual uh, alignment is extended to the moon. Um, also with that, as I mentioned before, with the pools of the moon on the tide, pools of the moon on the body, you know, many of us can sense changes within the, the period of the moon. And I feel like these, you know, preliterate cultures before technology, before Christianity, before all of this, would have been very sensitive to these changes. So in my practice, as I kind of mentioned, the moon um, is a symbol of the goddess. It is a representation of the goddess. Um, there's a lot of personification within Wicca, um, calling the moon her, referring to it as the goddess. Um, I don't necessarily look at it as a strict personification. The moon is not the goddess, um, but is, an, is a representation of, is an aspect of, the same way I kind of look at the sun as a representation or an aspect of the god. Um, because my, my beliefs extend uh, to this idea that everything that is spiritual or that is supernatural or that is unseen has some form of representation or some grounding within the physical. Um, so it's only natural that we have, you know, the two energies, the night and the day, the dark and the light, um, you know, the moon and the sun. Um, and we see these things, you know, the, the cycles of the sun, the, you know, cycles of nature, cycles of the, the um, seasons, you know, all of these things that are, that eventually extend out into spiritual ideas and spiritual truths have their basis within the physical or have some sort of representation in the physical. For me, I, I do definitely uh, recognize and I don't want to say worship, but I I use the aspects of the moon 
in my practice. Um, for many of us, the full moon is a representation of the the mother goddess. Um, it's when she's at her full, when she is um, at the at the peak of her life. Um, and during this time is a good time to ask for things or to cast spells or when her energy is the greatest. Um, as we all know, you know, the moon goes through phases. So we have the sort of maiden phase of the waxing moon when her energies are growing, when her influence is growing. And then we see the mother phase of the full moon and the croning phase of the uh, waning moon culminating in the new moon. Um, and within this generally, what is it, 28 uh, day cycle, you know, we see within this a physical representation of the entire cycle of life, of death, of rebirth, of, you know, this idea of what life is and a cycle within a cycle, microcosms within macrocosms. Um, so so that's a, a big reason why I find the cycle of the moon to be not only interesting but also important is the aspect that it is a physical representation of spiritual ideals and larger ideals um, and ideas and um, sort of reveals to us in a much more tangible way how life works. And we see the same in the sun, but like I said before, the moon is a lot easier to track, so earlier peoples would have been more aware of that than they were necessarily of, immediately at least, of the equinoxes and of the sort of death and rebirth of the sun. You know, in December, as we all know, the sun starts to get lower in the sky. It has less and less um, influence on the daytime. The days get shorter. And then after that, it starts to come back again, bringing with it more light and longer days. But that takes, you know, that takes six months, whereas the moon, like I said, is 28 days. So they would have recognized that a lot sooner than they would have the sun. So that's a little bit about how I use the moon in my practice and why I find it to be important um, and also a little bit of the uh, power or the spiritual ideals that I assign to the moon. Um, I'm very interested to hear what other people have to say and I will see you next Sunday. Bye.